so hi friends uh, today i have come up with a new uh, requirement today we will discuss the real time scenarios of symbolic parameter okay in which uh, real uh, scenarios in real time the symbolic parameter is used so for that i have taken one jcl so i'll take a scenario uh, which is quite similar to the real time scenario where uh, if you can uh, if you look at my screen i have taken this is a catalog prog actually don't go by this uh, library name okay it is just test library so this is actually a catalog prog it's a prog so first step you can see i am checking if this file test.ps.input has data or not print in file using idcams i think you already know how to check whether a file has data or it is empty print in file dd1 count of 1 so if this file has data in it the return code of this step will be zero and if this file does not have data in it the return code of this step will be four okay so this is the like property of a mainframe that whenever you check whether a file has data or not using idcams utility if it has data it will give return code zero if it does not have if it is empty uh, then return code will be four now in the second step what i'm doing is i'm executing a cobol program so i have just written a name of the program and where i have written some condition code four equal step zero one that means if the file which i'm checking in the first step if it has data then only i'm i will execute the cobol program in fact i will add this condition in the third step as well <clears throat> okay so if the file has data then only i'll execute the second program uh, second step uh, i will execute the cobol program in the second step otherwise i will bypass there is no point running a cobol program when the input file is empty so four equals step zero one will mean if the uh, first step file has data in it return code will be zero so this condition will become four comma eq comma zero which is a false condition because four is not equal to zero then it will execute the second step and if the uh, file is empty in the first step then return code will be four the condition will become four equal to four which is a true condition that will bypass this step so with this condition this uh, scenario is handled now in this program what i'm just imagine i am using a file this file test.ps.input as input file and i am using test i am creating a file test.ps.output suppose it's a uh, report file or something okay in this cobol program i am using this file as input i am loading data in a table and also i am generating one output file test.ps.output file in the third step what i am doing is you been using iba generator actually we can do smtp smtp is we can send a file through email to particular people so just email i have not written the entire step here but just using ib jenner we actually have to use ib jenner utility for smtp step so i am sending this report file to the respective clients or downstream applications which will go as an attachment in email so this file will go as an attachment whatever report it has it will go as an attachment like when you receive one email you have a subject line mail body and att attachment right in the third step we will have to use few files where in one file you will have the subject line in one file you uh, or in the same file only you can have the mail body and to whom you want to send that email and from where it is going and those things and regards everything will be written in that file there are two one or two four more files are uh, required to end that uh, entire smtp thing and also we'll have to use this file which we will send as attachment. So there is a proper format, I have not written it. So you just can understand that way. So in the third step, whatever return code, uh, sorry, whatever report file I'm generating in the second step that I'm sending to the client or downstream application in the third step. And again, I have <coughs> written condition this one because there is no point executing step three if uh, the file does not uh, have data only the input file because input file does not have data that means we'll bypass second step third step both okay so it is very important to mention this condition code in the third step as well because if you mention only in second step second step will be bypassed but in third step it will try to execute if you don't write condition and it will fail because this file is not generated only because you have bypassed the step two so this is basically the uh, requirement <clears throat> now 
so suppose this is part of a project which has come okay this kind of requirement or project probably has come suppose and this is part of a uh, this is the project which uh, uh, you will have to uh, some up, upstream application will send you this file there's a proper format file layout proper length format record format then name everything the configuration between their server and your maintenance server everything is done so they will send this file will uh, suppose it's a file triggered job in whichever jcl uh, you will execute this proc there's a file triggered job whenever they send the file this jcl will tr get triggered this proc will get triggered and this file will be checked in the second step it will be used as input output will be generated third step will send the output to the respective client immediately so whenever they send a file will immediately send the response now <clears throat> So this condition is fine. This is perfectly fine. It will work fine. So suppose after two months, so this requirement was for suppose client one. Okay. Now suppose after two months, another client or upstream application comes or partner comes who also want to use this same uh, project or same requirement or same method. They will also send us some files. We'll have to uh, load that file in our table and we have to generate some file and send it to them. So for that, what we have to do is we have to again create another proc for them specifically with the same steps like same IDKM, same COBOL program, same again FSMTP, just the files, input files will be different, output files will be different. So <clears throat> we have to do this thing again, again there will be one JCL. So that way only we have to mention, maintain. Now this is CL2. Now suppose after the two months another team comes which is CL3 which also wants to do the same thing with us for them again we have to create one more proc same proc only just the file names will change we have to create suppose like this suppose 10 15 20 50 clients come each and every client will be our upstream application uh, or uh, client which will send us files we will uh, run this process we'll send them some the um, report file okay so that way what will uh, what will happen this gc uh, this proc we have to create 50 times for each uh, uh, upstream application we have to create one separate proc for each upstream upstream application there will be one jcl i mean if for each one so unnecessarily we will have to create a lot of procs where the steps are exactly same we can easily maintain with a single generic proc that time this symbolic parameter concept will come into picture now again uh, when you gen generally execute a catalog proc first of all you have to write <coughs> job card then you have to write the jcl lib order and your proc library right jcl lib order how you call the proc, proc member from it so if more number of clients come then what we can do is we can create this proc as a generic proc generic proc means see the common things in this proc common things are actually most of the things are common only id cams we have to use okay these statements everything we have to be checking whether it has data or not cobol program same cobol program only we are using then same condition we have to use for bypassing same ib generator we are we have to use to send the file as an email as an attachment to the client so everything is same only the file content will be different and file name will be different okay for each client the file content will be different okay so some upstream will send different data some the data structure will be same file length will be same file format will be same just the uh, content will be different okay whatever data one client will send some other client will send different data and we have to load it we have to generate one file this output file will also have separate data because we will it will be particular to that uh, client only finally we are sending that fly file to the uh, respective client now what we can do is we can use some symbolic parameters what we can do is <clears throat> we have to find out uh, that what are the most uh, common things in this jcl so in this proc everything is common except for the file names because for each client the file name will be different now if the file name just imagine the file name format is this one the first qualifier should always be test last qualifier should always be input and for output file first qualifier should always be test last qualifier should always be output and the middle qualifier we can change as per the client names so what we can do is <clears throat> in the middle uh, qualifier i can use one symbolic parameter suppose dsn dot 
So for input file, I can use the symbolic parameter. Here also I have to do the same. Ampersand DSN dot. For output also, I'll create the output the same way. Ampersand DSN dot. And here also I have to use ampersand DSN dot. So this is the symbolic parameter I'm using here for input files, for output files, all of them. Why? Now, <clears throat> see, apart from this file names, everything else was same. Obviously, three programs are exactly same. Just the file names were different. I have made the file names also generic now. So this program has, proc has become generic now. That means it can be used by any client. Now what we have to do is, for 50 clients, we have to use 50 JCLs now. Only 50 JCLs will be required, but proc will be exactly same. On uh, proc uh, will be exactly one. There is uh, no requirement of 50 procs now because the proc I have created generic. So only one proc you can execute from execute from 50 different JCLs. Now you may ask me why are 50 JCLs required? Why can't we use only one JCL? That is because for each client there should be some difference in the file name. As we have, uh, suppose you have discussed this with your upstream applications, that whenever you will send the file, the file name should be like this. First, it should start with test, final should be input and middle qualifier, you only decide or whatever it may be. Middle one we can handle, but first and last we cannot compromise. Similarly for output also, because otherwise it will hamper our existing process. So now for 50 JCLs, <coughs> for suppose client one, the JCL will be like this. Suppose job card, then I have to use this set parameter, set DSN equal to CL1, suppose. Okay, for client 2, it will be job card, set DSN equal to CL2. For client 3, job card, set CL, sorry, DSN equal to CL3, like this for all the uh, 50 clients or 50 applications, you have to create 50 JCLs. Job card though will be same only, but here only in DSN, you have to mention whatever was decided. It is not like it should be CL1, CL2, but if with the first application or client, it was decided as CL1, you write CL1, whatever name was decided with them, just write that one. And also, uh, if the output file qualifier uh, symbolic parameter you are using something else other than DSN then you can uh, set two parameters at that time so this way what will happen is whenever client one sends a file they will send a file with this name test.cl1 dot input they will upload in their server when it reaches our mainframe system it will be reached as it will reach as test.cl1 dot input now our JCL uses symbolic parameter, our proc. Okay, so whenever the file comes, the first JCL client one for this JCL, for this client one, whatever JCL you have written, that JCL will be triggered. This JCL will execute the proc. Which proc? This generic proc only it will execute. And inside the proc, wherever you are using this symbolic parameter DSN will be resolved with this value. So for client one, one job will run. Particular for client one, that job will use files corresponding to client one only because client one will send us files with the name test.cl1.input and it will be received like that only because middle qualifier we are resolving with cl1 only output also will be gener generated with test.cl1.output it will be sent to client for client two again in the same day only if the client two sends a file then what will happen this sec for client two whatever jcl you have uh, created in your job scheduling tool that will be triggered because it's a file triggered job all of them now client 2 with client 2 suppose you decided that the input file should be test.cl2.input output file should be test.cl2.output so they will upload the file in their system as test.cl2.input this jcl will get triggered this jcl will execute this proc inside this generic proc we'll see dsn is a symbolic parameter this value will be resolved from the second jcl as cl2 so we will it will use the file input file as test.cl2.input it will create an output file as test.cl2.output and it will send back to client similarly for third application fourth application fifth for all of them corresponding jcls will run and it's a file trigger job. Whenever they'll send file, the job will run and it will never fail with duplicate file because the middle qualifier will always change for each client. But each and every client will be able to send a file only once in a day. If they want to send multiple times, they have to use some time parameter or something. <clears throat>